cool uh all right uh hi uh and uh you know thanks for joining this talk uh my name is sagar uh and i'll be speaking on you know the coil uh, which is uh, image loading library uh, for android and uh as i already mentioned like this will be volume 2 of uh, you know the same topic that i've spoken um so i'll be deep diving into you know the image loading pipeline and you know caching mechanism of this library so if you already attend a previous talk this would be like bit different uh, not same uh, so before i start a little bit about myself my name is sagar pidadia uh, i'm an android, android engineer delivery hero and uh, I'm also a Google developer expert for Android. Uh, I blog, speak, and you know, uh, talk about Android on Twitter. So this is my Twitter handle. Uh, in case if you want to connect with me, uh, I'm active on Twitter. All right. Uh, before we start, small uh, plug from my side. Uh, sorry about this, but uh, we at Delivery Hero hiding, uh, you know, Android engineers across all our products. So if logistics is something that excites you. Uh, please feel free to check out our career site and uh, reach out to me like uh, in case if you have any question, more than happy to discuss that. All right, let's get started. Uh, small disclaimer before we start, uh, I'll be uh, you know talking about uh, Coil 2.0, uh, which is uh, in alpha uh, stage currently. So don't be surprised if you, uh, you know, uh, don't find anything that we discussed today on uh, libraries documentation or anywhere else because these are the uh, you know changes which is not stable and uh, uh, will be stable soon so let's start all right uh let's see like at high level uh, what we'll be discussing today uh, so we'll be uh, first uh, you know discussing what is coil exactly why you should consider this library and how you can utilize api uh, and uh, you know Later, we'll be deep diving into uh, its entire image loading pipeline and caching mechanism. So what is COIL? Uh, COIL is an acronym for Coroutine Image Loader. Uh, and uh, as you must have guessed, like it has support for Coroutine. Uh, under the hood, it, use, it uses Coroutine to execute its uh, image loading pipeline. And also, uh, it has very uh, uh, nice support for Coroutine. Uh, uh, it has a API that you can use to load image uh, synchronously uh, within Coroutine context. And the next question that comes, at least that came into my mind, like uh, why you should consider this library, because there are, you know, a couple of libraries out there uh, when it comes to, you know, image loading on Android. Uh, there's Glide, there's Picasso, there's Fresco. So why you should consider this library? Uh, well, the short answer is like this uh, library is Kotlin first. Uh, it uh, you know uses uh, a modern uh, API of Kotlin. It has support for coroutine. It also has support for Jetpack Compose. So let's see uh, like why you should consider this library. Few reasons. Uh, the first one is like it's a modern library. Uh, as I already mentioned, it's a Kotlin first library. So it has support for coroutine. It also has support for Jetpack Compose. So you can use uh, within Jetpack Compose also. And uh, under the hood, it uses all the modern uh, library. Uh, it uses OKHTTP for fetching, uh, you know, result from network. And also, it uses uh, lifecycle component of Jetpack uh, to, you know, cancel uh, on fly request if view is out of bounds. So that way, it's it's a modern library. Uh, it's easy to use. Uh, it has very nice API uh, for Kotlin. Uh, and if you're a Java user, uh, for Java user also, it has very nice API. Uh, and it's lightweight. Uh, Coil adds around, I, if I'm not wrong, 2,000 methods. If you are already depending on OKHTP and uh, you know the core routine, uh, this is. Uh, 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 Basically, uh, I'm talking about the stable version. I'm not sure about the uh, 2.0, which is currently in alpha, but uh, uh, it is lightweight compared to you know other libraries. And uh, the fact that uh, you know with less memory footprint, you're getting all the features. So that way, it's very light. Uh, it's also fast. Uh, so Coil performs a lot of uh, optimization uh, while executing uh, you know the pipeline. It has uh, support for caching, uh, disk uh, cache, and in-memory cache. Uh, 
it also perform down sampling if you are on uh, low bandwidth so that way uh, it's very fast even if you are on a uh, slower network so, yeah these are the couple of reason why you should you know consider this library uh, now let's see like uh, how you can utilize uh, so first let's see like how if you are java user how, how you can utilize so uh, the syntax is in kotlin but uh, i think uh, there's not much difference uh, the same syntax will apply like the same way you can uh, you know uh, load uh, ask for image uh, uh, using uh, builder pattern basically uh, what you need is uh, you need to create image request uh, through builder pattern and uh, pass in all the information uh, things like you know source from where you want to load image uh, whether you need animation uh, target where you want to load uh, in this case it's the image view and then finally call build uh, so you have image request. Uh, next thing you will be required is image loader, which is essentially nothing but uh, uh, you know a class which is responsible for executing entire pipeline. And library already uh, gives you a singleton of uh, this uh, image loader, and it's recommended because uh, this object is quite heavy, and uh, you might not want to create. Uh, for every image request. So uh, it's an extension on top of context. So you can, within context, you can, uh, you know, get the image loader and uh, you can basically uh, use that to load image. Uh, in case if you need any customization on image loader, things like if you want to provide your own fetcher or own decoder, then you have to maintain your own, uh, you know, image loader. So you can create uh, through builder pattern and maintain as a singleton. And finally, uh, you call uh, uh, NQ on the image loader and pass in the image request. That will give you disposable. And uh, disposable is something that you can use to you know, cancel ongoing request. Uh, but uh, library will do that uh, for you automatically. Uh, but in case if you need manual control, that is possible. Let's see like, uh, uh, you know, how we can utilize uh, API if you're a Kotlin user. Uh, fairly simple. like. Uh, it has extension uh, function on top of image view, which is load. And then you pass in the image source. It could be URL. It could be you know the local resource. It could be file object. And under the hood, this load function will do heavy lifting for you. It will create the image request and pass in that to image loader that we saw previously. So if you're a Java user, you have to do that uh, manually. But if you're a Kotlin user, you just have to call this load function. Uh, in case if you want to specify, uh, uh, you know, few things like animation, placeholder, or transformation, you just have to pass the trailing lambda, which is nothing but lambda with receiver on image request builder, and uh, it will uh, basically consume this lambda and create image request with all the options that you provide within this lambda. It has support for core routine as well, uh, so. Essentially, you create the image in, instead of calling uh, NQ, you call execute, uh, uh, which is nothing but suspending function and uh, which will suspend the execution of coroutine. And uh, it will return result, and later on, uh, you can consume that within coroutine. Also, it has support for Jetpack Compose, and this is how you can you know, use uh, this library within image composable. You just need to call remember image painter uh, method. And uh, this method uh, uh, basically internally creates image request and passing that to image loader. And similar to what we saw previously, in case if you need some customization, like uh, you know transformation and crossfade, uh, additionally you need to pass uh, uh, lambda with receiver on image request builder, and uh, library will consider all the options that you pass within this lambda. Okay, all right. So let's deep dive into you know its uh, pipeline. Uh, so uh, as you can see, like it has various uh, steps. Uh, let's just go over them one by one uh, at high level, and then we'll see them. So the first thing is, uh, you as a library user, you pass image request to image loader. Then uh, image loader will kickstart the entire pipeline. So it will hand over stuff to interceptor uh, and. It will give uh, data data here in this, uh, uh, as you can see on the arrow. Uh, this is nothing but input for interceptor, which is your image source. So it's a generic type because it could be anything. It could be file object, could be URL. 
And Interceptor is uh, similar to uh, OKHttp Interceptor. The library took inspiration from OKHttp Interceptor. And this is where basically you get a chance to intercept your uh, you know image request. Next thing is uh, Interceptor will hand over stuff to Mapper. Uh, and Mapper is self-explanatory. Like it will map uh, uh, your, uh, you know, uh, image source from type T to you know type M. So if you have custom object and within that you have image source, you just have to specify mapper and library will uh, figure out uh, how you should you know map uh, your image source. And then uh, it will feed that to uh, you know fetcher. Fetcher is actually responsible for fetching image. Uh, uh, it could be from file system or it could be from uh, remote network or it could be from your uh, local resources. Uh, in case uh, of local resources, uh, there's no need to decode, so it will just, uh, uh, you know, spit out the drawdown directly. But in case if you are fetching from file or maybe network, uh, it will spit out a fetch result, uh, which has uh, image raw image uh, in the byte format, and a decoder will decode that and spit out the decode uh, result, which has, uh, you know, drawable. Uh, and the last step is uh, transformation, and transformation will not get executed every time only if you have if you specify uh, you know transformation uh, in your image request then only it will get executed and transformation is nothing but modifying pixel data so if you want to apply filter or maybe uh, you know uh, circle crop transformation uh, you can do that uh, and library will simply apply that and spit out the image result which could be uh, you know success result or error result based on the execution uh, so yeah, so this is all about uh, pipeline at high level. Let's just see each of this step in detail. So image loader, uh, image loader is a service class responsible for executing and managing the entire pipeline. Uh, as I already mentioned, like this is the class which controls, you know, the entire pipeline, and uh, uh, it takes image request uh, as a input, and uh, it is recommended to uh, you know uh, use image loader which library provides uh, because this is uh, quite heavy and uh, you know for each request if you're creating this object uh, you'll run out of memory uh, sooner or later based on the device you are running next step is interceptor uh, interceptor uh, allows you to observe transform short circuit or retry requests so basically this is the step uh, uh, wherein like you can observe the uh, not observe sorry uh, you can intercept the uh, image request and this is your chance to run your own custom logic uh, and uh, basically you can uh, decide whether you want to proceed with uh, pipeline or not and it's inspired from uh, OKHttp interceptor similar to like how you can uh, intercept the network request in OKHttp uh, this is a similar concept you can intercept the uh, uh, image request. So let's see one example. Uh, so let's say we have a custom cache interceptor here, uh, which is nothing but, uh, you know, our own custom caching layer. Uh, and basically, uh, as you can see, it takes LRU cache uh, instance as a, one of the constructor parameter. And uh, before kickstarting the entire pipeline, uh, library will give you callback in this intercept function. And first you check whether this request is already there in our custom cache or not. If it is there, you just short circuit the entire pipeline. Uh, you just return, you know, success result. And if it is not there, uh, you just call chain or proceed and it will uh, continue executing the entire pipeline. So you can have n number of interceptor uh, and the order in which you plug in this interceptor library will execute uh, in that order. So this is how you can plug in your own custom data uh, through, you know, uh, image loader. So as I mentioned previously, like if you want to customize few things, you have to manage your own image loader. And this is how exactly you can do that. Uh, basically, you need to call component uh, and pass in the Lambda. And here you can plug in all the, uh, you know, your custom component uh, of the pipeline. So in this case, we are uh, plugging the interceptor. The last thing which will get executed, irrespective whether you have uh, uh, irrespective whether you provided your own custom interceptor or not, is engine interceptor and 
this interceptor is from library itself and this is the last interceptor which will get executed uh, after uh, in case if you provide your uh, own interceptor uh, in case there is no interceptor from user then this will get executed uh, and this is responsible for caching uh, for uh, i'm sorry this is responsible for checking in memory cache uh, so this will basically check uh, you know whether the request uh, is already there in the in memory or not uh, and if it is there, it will simply uh, short circuit entire uh, image uh, loading pipeline. But if it is uh, not there, it will just fetch and store the result in the in memory cache. Cool. Uh, so this is all about uh, interceptor. Let's move on. Uh, mappers. Uh, so mappers are nothing but which allows you to support for the, uh, add support for you know your own custom data types. So let's see one example. Uh, so let's say you have an item class, uh, which is your own custom class. And within this, you have, you know, uh, image URL. And uh, instead of, uh, you know, passing uh, image, uh, uh, sorry, item dot uh, image URL, what you can do is you can pass in this object directly to the load function here. And uh, library will figure out like how to get the image URL as long as you have this mapper implementation. So basically, it maps uh, one data type to another data type. Uh, and essentially, this will uh, tell library how to get the image source. And here, you can pass uh, item directly rather than calling item dot uh, you know, image URL. And this is very useful. Like if you have a nested object hierarchy, then instead of calling this dot, this dot, this dot, this, and then finally your image uh, URL, you can uh, pass in uh, your custom object. And uh, yeah, uh, again, you can plug in that as well uh, to your e image loader. So through components, similar to what we saw for uh, intercept. The next thing uh, will, that will get executed is Fetcher. Uh, Fetcher translates uh, your data, uh, uh, which is nothing but image source, into either you know the image source or uh, drawable. So the image source is nothing but uh, you know your draw image in the byte format, uh, or it could be drawable in case if you are uh, loading you know the local resources. So the library has like built-in uh, fetchers. Uh, these are some some of the built-in fetchers. Asset URI fetcher would be responsible for you know uh, fetching. Uh, uh, e image from your asset uh, URI. Content URI uh, will query the content uh, provider and give you, uh, you know, image from content provider. And file uh, fetcher will fetch uh, uh, image from file system and HTTP from, you know, uh, remote network. Uh, if you want to implement your own custom fetcher, uh, you can do that uh, by implementing fetcher interface and uh, you need to uh, within this fetcher interface is a factory interface, uh, basically uh, which has uh, you know the create uh, uh, method as you can see, and it gives you data which is nothing but your image source, and you have to decide whether you know you can uh, fetch res uh, this result from the source that you are getting. In case you can't, uh, you just simply return null. Uh, in case you can, then uh, basically you create the fetcher. Uh, you know, instance uh, and uh, give it to library. So uh, library, so whenever you give any, uh, you know, uh, image uh, source, uh, library will ask all the fetchers uh, and it will run through all the factory uh, of the fetcher and whoever is returning uh, first non-null uh, value, uh, it will hand over uh, things to that uh, fetcher. And you can uh, plug in again uh, your factory fa uh, fetcher factory uh, through components. The next thing is decoder, uh, which takes fetch result uh, and converts uh, your image source, which is image in byte format, to actual drawable. Um, and library has built in a, a decoder, uh, JPEG, uh, PNG, and uh, web piece. Uh, these are part of uh, you know the base. Uh, module but in case if you need uh, support for you know svg uh, gif 
and video frame, then library has extensions. So instead of depending on the base module, uh, you have to depend on you know one of the extension for uh, you know these formats, SVG, HF, or video frame, and it will give you support for uh, these formats. Okay. Uh, and uh, again, custom decoder, if you want to implement your own custom decoder, that is also possible through, uh, you know, uh, decoder uh, interface. Uh, you have to implement this. And again, the factory of this decoder interface. And uh, this will give you source result. Uh, and you need to decide based on the source result you're getting whether your decoder will be able to decode, uh, you know, uh, the source result or not. Uh, in case you can't, uh, you can simply return null. Uh, but in case if you can't, then uh, return the you know the implementation of decoder. And similar to fetcher, library will also query all the decoder one by one, and uh, you know whoever is returning non-null first, it will hand over stuff to that decoder. Okay, uh, and if you want to uh, again, uh, you can plug in uh, your own custom decoder through components. And finally, like if you if you specify transformation uh, in your image request, it will get executed. And transformation allows you to change, uh, you know, pixel data. And uh, uh, there are uh, built-in transformation uh, that library provides: uh, circle crop and rounded corner. But in case if you need your own custom transformation, that is uh, also possible. Uh, you just again need to implement transformation interface, and then. Uh, specify cache key now this cache key is really important because uh, this is the key that will get, get combined with in memory cache key and uh, basically it can uh, you know cache your transformation as well so next time if you are requesting the same image with same transformation it can serve uh, a request from cache uh, rather than you know applying transformation again and uh, uh, of course you need to implement the transform transform function which uh, basically takes a uh, bitmap and spit, uh, spits out, uh, you know, the transform bitmap. And uh, this is how you can plug in, uh, again, similar to fetcher, decoder, and, uh, you know, interceptor. And finally, you have your image result. It could be success or error based on the execution of the pipeline. Uh, also, I want to touch upon a thread uh, on which each of this step get executed so like the first two will get executed on main thread uh the next three would be executed on the io thread by default but uh, uh, you can specify your own custom dispatcher uh coroutine dispatcher and uh, uh for each of these steps you can uh, specify the dispatcher and library will use that dispatcher to dispatch each of the step um and the last thing which is not part of uh, pipeline, uh, but uh, uh, which is also important, which is transition. Uh, it's nothing but animation. If you want to apply any animation, then you can, you know, uh, that is also possible. And that has to uh, happen on, you know, main thread. OK, let's talk about caching. Now, library has two layers of caching, uh, disk cache and in-memory cache. Uh, Disk cache will store uh, image in raw format, and in memory cache will store uh, you know the bit map, uh, in RAM. Uh, I'm sure you must be aware about the difference between disk cache and in memory cache. But in case if you're not, then disk cache is something which is persisted in your file system, and in memory cache uh, resides in your RAM. So if you clear your app, uh, that will go away. But disk cache will uh, be persisted. Uh, uh, permanently in your file system. So let's uh, talk about the uh, disk cache. Um, so coil 2.0 has its own disk cache. So uh, basically this uh, prior to uh, coil 2.0 library uh, uh, was using, you know, uh, OK HTTP disk cache. And, uh, you know, uh, there are a few problems uh, that uh, uh, OK, it should be disk cache had. So I think because of that, uh, not specifically, I mean, uh, uh, problems related to coil and not a uh, problem in OK, it should be disk cache. So uh, that's why 2.0 has, you know, its own uh, disk cache uh, implementation. So we'll be talking about the first one, the uh, 
you know, this cache implementation of library and OCache okay, is something that you can check. Uh, so yeah, let's see like where uh, this cache comes into picture exactly. So it is essentially used by HTTP URI fetcher. Basically, this is the fetcher which is responsible for fetching uh, images from network. So uh, whenever it gets, uh, uh, you know, image uh, source uh, from the pipeline, it will first pass in that uh, image source to a disk cache and see if it is there in the disk cache or not. If it is there, then it will basically, you know, return snapshot. Uh, snapshot, think of it, uh, snapshot as, you know, the object that uh, encapsulate uh, the file, which is there in the disk. Uh, we'll see that uh, in detail. And if the snapshot is not null, then uh, basically it will just pass result of decoder. Uh, if it is, uh, yeah, sorry. If the snapshot is there, it will just pass, and pass that to the decoder. If it is not there, then uh, it will fetch uh, result from the network, get the image data and write it to the disk cache. Uh, and uh, it will read from the disk cache and, uh, you know, uh, pass that to uh, decoder. So yeah, uh, this is where like disk cache comes into picture in, in the entire pipeline. And let's just, uh, you know, see a disk cache in detail, like uh, how uh, uh, it is being implemented in library. So uh, a disk cache, uh, this is the uh, view of the disk cache uh, interface. Uh, Basically, uh, it has methods for uh, reading, uh, writing image to the disk cache. Uh, you can remove a particular uh, file from the disk cache. Uh, you can wipe out the entire disk cache. And uh, there are two additional things, snapshot and editor, uh, that we'll see uh, uh, in some time. Uh, so disk cache, this is the abstract uh, uh, you know, uh, view of the disk cache. Uh, and the actual implementation depends on the concrete implementation, which is LRU disk cache. Uh, LRU is nothing but least recently used uh, caching strategy. And uh, before we uh, talk, uh, talk about uh, you know uh, LRU disk cache, uh, uh, I want to touch upon a few things, uh, which is uh, really important to you know LRU disk cache. So this coming to the snapshot, uh, as we saw previously, the snapshot and editor, the two interfaces. So LRU disk cache has implementation for, uh, you know, the snapshot and the snapshot, think of snapshot as a result of, you know, cache read operation. So every time you perform read operation, we we'll give you the snapshot. And uh, basically this encapsulates, uh, you know, uh, the in-memory representation of uh, uh, the key that you specify, uh, basically, uh, uh, which is like you pass in the key uh, and it will return you uh, the snapshot, which is in memory representation of, uh, you know, your entry in the file system. So basically this will give you access to a uh, cache file object and you can read that file, uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, fetcher. So, uh, next thing is editor. Uh, the editor is responsible for, you know, uh, basically it allows you to write, uh, disk uh, right to the disk so basically it allows you to write uh, your uh, image file uh, on disk and uh, again it will give you access to the cache file uh, uh, and specifically the dirty file so the whole idea is to you write to the dirty file and once you commit that file uh, the lru disk cache will copy you know uh, all uh, content in the dirty file uh, to the you know, the uh, uh, normal file, uh, which is, we'll see that in upcoming slides. Uh, so, and the last thing is, uh, you know, the actual uh, uh, map, uh, basically uh, the LRU, sorry, actual LRU disk cache, which is backed by LinkedIn ha uh, linked hash map, uh, uh, which is basically uh, LRU uh, uh, cache uh, and, uh, this is nothing but in-memory representation of the disk cache. So whatever you have in the, your file system, uh, basically it's an in-memory representation of that uh, that thing. So think of it as a snapshot of your file system. And uh, 
uh, it has uh, as you can see it's it's a it's a key value pair of string versus entry and entry is nothing but uh, you know each entry in the uh, disk uh, uh, on your disk uh, uh, will get mapped to entry object and this object essentially holds uh, you know a clean file and the dirty file that we spoke about so the dirty file is something that you uh, use to write to and then once you call commit it will copy all the content from dirty file to clean file and it keeps track of you know cache entry uh, status so uh, as you perform you know disk operation like uh, reading writing uh, so it keeps track of that and uh, it will basically uh, you know uh, keep track of uh, you know whether uh, it should clear uh, this entry in the next cleanup cycle whether this entry is currently being uh, returned to the cache or whether this entry is currently being read from the cache so yeah before we go into detail about lru disk cache uh, it's really important to understand the file system uh, so library uh, stores two kind of files one is journal file and uh, the other one is your normal image file which is nothing but you know the, the file where your uh, image bytes will get stored so the journal file uh, is required uh, basically to restore uh, you know your cache status whenever you initialize your in uh, disk cache so think of it as you know the record uh, permanently stored inside the file system and next time you initialize you know uh, disk cache it will just read this file, the journal file, and recreates in-memory representation that we saw the linked hash map uh, through this file. So uh, this is the format of uh, you know journal file. So the first five lines, the header of this file, is not important, but uh, the content after that, which is you know the uh, all the entries that, that you can see, uh, these are nothing but uh, each operation uh, uh, on the disk cache. So uh, each entry has three parts or two parts based on the operation that you are doing. The first one is the status. Uh, so it's essentially like, uh, as you can see, clean, dirty, remove, and read. These are all the status. So if you commit a particular file uh, in the disk cache, uh, it will uh, log you know, the clean entry uh, and uh, it if you if you're currently writing to the cache it will log the dirty entry uh and if you remove specific file it will just uh log remove remove entry and same for read if you're performing any read operation it will log the read uh, uh, entry um the next thing is uh, the key uh, basically this is your status uh next thing is key uh this key is nothing but uh, you know the hash ma uh, uh, hash uh, of your uh, e image URL, uh, and this is used to uniquely identify a particular entry in the disk cache. And if this entry, like the uh, if you are committing uh, you know a particular file, uh, it also records you know the size of the clean file and the dirty file. So essentially, this is uh, the size of the you, you, you know your clean clean file uh, and uh, i'm sorry uh, not the size of clean and dirty file but the size of the metadata file and the data file so it locks uh, two kind of files uh, metadata and the actual uh, you know your image file so yeah so this is the file uh, that uh, you know the disk cache will use to recreate every time uh, you know you initialize the uh, disk cache uh, and it will be clear the current uh, cache uh, snapshot so let's see like uh, how uh, you know uh, disk cache will perform uh, read flow uh, oh, fe sorry fetcher perform uh, read flow uh, on the disk cache so fetcher will uh, you know pass in the key and call the get uh, and uh, it will check whether you know disk cache is initialized or not if not, then it will perform the initialization. So it will get the journal file, and then uh, it will spit out, uh, you know, the in-memory representation of your cache, which is nothing but uh, linked hash map. Uh, and then, uh, you know, next time if you are calling get again, uh, since initialization is already done, it will skip that part. So it's kind of lazily, uh, it will lazily initialize, you know, your disk cache. So yeah, you get the. Uh, 
uh, next time you'll get uh, uh, you know initialization is already there. So what you'll do, you'll get the entry from the cache. So you uh, you know uh, pass in the key to this linked hash map and it'll give you the entry. Uh, and this entry will have uh, file objects uh, reference to the file objects, which is pointing to you know your disk cache, uh, your file system. And it will lock the, this read operation to the journal file, and then uh, it will check whether journal cleanup is required or not. So periodically, library uh, uh, also perform uh, you know uh, uh, journal file cleanup. So after two thousand operation, uh, if I'm not wrong, it will just uh, uh, you know clean up uh, journal file. So if cleanup is uh, not required, it will just give you a snapshot. If it is required, it will just run that cleanup and give you the snapshot. Now let's see the write flow. Uh, so fetcher will commit, uh, you know, uh, will call, uh, call call commit on editor. And editor, uh, again, it will check whether it's initialized or not. Uh, uh, and if it is not initialized, it will take the journal file from the file system and uh, it will initialize uh, you know the linked hash map and uh, next time if you're calling committing uh, there's no need to initialize and it will run uh, it will just copy all the dirty files uh, to the clean uh, and uh, for that it needs uh, you know the two files so it will just uh, pass in the key to this linked hash map and get the entry and this entry will have dirty file as well as clean file and it will perform copy and finally uh, it will log entry to the journal file the clean entry that we saw previously and if it uh, and it will check whether uh, if cache is full or not if it is full then it will run the cleanup task if it is not then uh, it will simply uh, you know finish the write operation so yeah, coming to the last part of this talk, which is in-memory cache. Uh, so in-memory cache uh, has two layers. Again, it has a strong uh, uh, memory cache and a weak memory cache. Uh, strong memory cache holds the strong reference of bitmap, and a weak memory cache uh, will hold your weak reference. So uh, if strong uh, memory cache is full, then it will, uh, you know, uh, remove entry from strong memory cache and it will store inside the weak, weak memory cache. So it's kind of additional layer uh, within, you know, in memory cache. Let's see like where uh, exactly in memory ca cache uh, comes into picture. So uh, you have an engine interceptor uh, that we saw previously, like that will get always uh, that will always get executed, and basically this will check uh, before, you know. Uh, proceeding, it will check whether this request is already there in, in memory cache or not. If it is there, it will just simply short circuit the entire pipeline. If it is not there, it will ask uh, weak memory uh, cache uh, to check whether you know this request is there in the weak memory. Uh, if it is there, it will again short circuit. If it is not there, it will just proceed further with the uh, entire pipeline. So going into a bit detail about you know uh, strong uh, memory cache. Uh, so it's backed by you know LRU cache again, uh, similar to disk cache that we saw previously. Um, and the size of this cache is computed dynamically. When I say dynamically, that means uh, you know you have an option to specify uh, you know what uh, percentage of your free memory uh, you would like to allo uh, allocate for in-memory cache. So while creating image loader, you can specify that. And if you uh, specify, let's say 0.25, it will resolve 25% of your free memory uh, for uh, you know in-memory cache. And if you don't specify anything, library will use the default value uh, for you know uh, in-memory cache. Uh, weak memory cache. Uh, is backed by again hash map, simple hash map, uh, and uh, basically things will move from uh, strong to weak. If strong memory cache is full, uh, it will remove entry from uh, strong memory and it will store inside this hash map. And periodically it will do cleanups uh, after you know ten read or write operations. So uh, 
every 10 read and write operation on weak memory cache will result into a uh, cleanup and uh, basically it will remove all the uh, bitmaps that are not uh, referenced currently uh, and it will just remove that from uh, you know weak memory cache so yeah that is all about uh, you know uh, this uh, library uh, i hope it was very useful uh, i know it's too much uh, it is difficult to get uh, everything in one go but i think uh, if you if you check the github uh, repo i think it's fairly simple uh, you can check uh, you know the entire library uh, step by step uh, we saw previously each step at a time and i think uh, you'll get it the uh, and also library has very nice uh, documentation so if you're stuck somewhere just read the uh, documentation and uh, in fact, this for, by preparing for this talk, I referred a doc documentation uh, only, uh, and yeah, it's fairly simple. So you can go through the documentation. So to kind of summarize this talk, uh, basically we uh, first saw what is called exactly uh, why you should consider this uh, library. And then we uh, talked about you know the API, uh, and then we. Uh, talked about you know its image loading pipeline and we touch upon finally uh, you know caching so with that uh, yeah before uh, i close this so yeah I, uh, resources as i mentioned documentation is your uh, you know uh, go to resource uh, if you want to learn about this library and uh, yeah it's open source so you can check the code and uh, you know get your uh, uh, head uh, uh, basically, yeah, uh, wrap your head around this library. So, yeah. Um, with that, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I'm open to uh, take any question if you have.